Out there beyond that fence, every living thing that crawls, flies, or squats in the mud wants to kill you and eat your eyes for jujubes. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, the Talking Ball Club. Today we're going over the Tavor SAR, the civilian semi-automatic rifle version of the Tavor 21. Let's dive on in. Hello there. I know you're on the toilet watching this, drinking your coffee, consuming your beer. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Your comments are a sacrifice to the algorithm god, a god of which who likes your user interaction. So leave that comment because I threw it in when I'm on the toilet. So big thank you. Now, the Tavor 21 came about as a product of Israeli invention. They started development on this gun in the late 90s, I believe off the top of my head, specifically 1995, and it entered into some trials and tribulation periods with the IDF in the early 2000s, I believe 2001, 2002, and then it became formally adopted by the IDF around that time period in the early 2000s. Now, before we go any further, I am not a historian. I am a big chimp on the internet that's LARPing in a balaclava, so take everything I say and do with a grain of salt. We, of course, have to thank our Patreon. A big thank you to Patreon. Buy some merchandise. It really helps out the channel, guys. Okay, back to the Tavor 21. Now, the Tavor 21, or the Tavor SAR, is one of those guns that was a gun of the future, but quickly went the way of the Dodo, at least on the American consumer market. It did have a breakout year, I believe in 2013, 2014, on the consumer market, where everyone was like, oh my God, a bullpup is here that doesn't suck, and it's affordable. You know, we can get it. After that, at least when I was coming up in gun culture, the Tavor was kind of like phased out as a popular gun. Now, that's not to say it's still not beloved by a lot of people here in the States. It still has a relatively decent sized cult following. Now, the X95 actually was adopted by a local law enforcement agency here in Arizona. I didn't reach out to them, but I've seen pictures online of Goodyear PD rocking the X95, and I believe they said it was an option of one of their patrol rifles, which to me is kind of a cool thing that they allow for more weapons in their patrol arsenal because from a law enforcement setting, I could see the Tavor, or at least the X95 series of rifles, being favorable for a more confined setting. Now, a big downside, of course, that's always talked about is the lack of suppressor setting options. Now, Garantham, of course, my older brother, has an excellent video on the X95 where he essentially crushed it and covered all the relevant topics about suppressor settings, ergonomics, and stuff like this. Now, this video, I wanted to focus specifically on the Tavor SAR. Now, why would you want to do that on a relatively outdated version of the Tavor series? Well, me personally, I am obsessed with the Tavor SAR of the Tavor series of rifles. The other ones, I don't really care about, but this one, it has my goat. And why does it have my goat? Nostalgia. As a young lad, 2009, Modern Warfare 2 has just came out, and what do they have in that game? The Tavor 21. Now, this really rocked my world. I think I was 13 in 2009, and boy, oh boy, was I going crazy for the Tavor 21. Out of all the guns, for whatever reason, I used that gun like crazy, and then it made me want to get the airsoft version, and then now, as a grown-ass man, I secured the Tavor 21 version. So the nostalgia button runs deep in my little brain. So that's essentially why I secured it and I have this weird love for it. Now you're probably looking at it and thinking, hey, this doesn't look like the normal Tavor SARS on the American market with the large monolithic top rail. And the, when I bought this gun, it did come with a monolithic top rail, but I took it off in favor of trying to get back to the original IDF look of the Tavor SAR or the Tavor 21. And that's essentially with a Mars red dot. And then of course it has a Picatinny rail option on the side, but for whatever reason, I hate 
the way the lights look on here on when they're side canted, but I usually do like to throw a light on there. So it's daytime though, so leave me alone. Now the Tavor SAR and the Tavor 21 or the IDF version of the Tavor, they have a little bit of a differentiating feature. So back here it is completely blank and that is because it's lacking the setup for the clip-in magnifier. And while that kind of bums me out and I wish that this particular model had it, maybe I'll get that more true to faith model. Going down the gun, you'll notice that you have this Mars red dot. Now the Mars red dot itself kind of sucks. I'm being honest, it's not that great of a red dot, but why did I get it, Savio? Why did I get it, my viewer who is on the toilet? I got it to complete the look of this gun, yet again, be going back to the nostalgia reason. Now, it's powered off a AA battery, and it has a few user settings. Typically, this is the off setting, and then you have your red dot setting. Now, there's a setting in here that works in conjunction for night vision aiming a uh, laser and so it works in conjunction with this button right here typically when you get these hand guards these will have a, another button over it and then you could pop that out and you put the other button underneath to where you can activate the laser but the thing about something that does two jobs typically it does two jobs poorly in the case of the mars red dot it's exactly that it does two jobs poorly <laughs> Now the Tavor 21 is one of those guns, I don't know for certain if they expected it, at least IWI expected it to see a huge widespread adoption. I'm assuming they probably hoped it would take on because that means the company's making a lot of money. Now, doing my homework, more homework of which I've ever done in college, I never graduated college. So some countries that stood out were like, say, Angola, some South American countries, India. I think India was one of the countries that secured a large number of them. And then, of course, Israel being the most popular user of them. Now, one country that stood out to receiving the Tavor that I found interesting that would make it a little bit more battle hardened would be Ukraine. Now, these popping up in Ukraine, they were used under the, I believe it was the Fort Company. I'm blanking, Savio. We have to ask for it in as well as show a bunch of cool pictures. But the they were known as the Fort Tutor. To one, at least for the Tavor SAR variant. These have been seen being used by a number of Ukrainian forces after Russia invaded. It's one of those things I'm assuming where it's like, hey, all weapons kind of go. They even had the fort variants that were chambered in 545, which logistically makes a lot of sense for that part of the country. So it's really interesting and it makes the gun even more battle hardened because this gun did see a lot of use in Israel on the Gaza Strip with certain of their operations, as well as I think it saw some action in India in some flare-ups and some conflicts, but I'm gonna be honest, my Western male brain isn't acclimated to the conflicts that go on in India. I'm sorry, my Indian fans. So like I was saying earlier, is why that's I find that so interesting because the gun is relatively unbattle tested. Of all the guns I get on the channel that have a huge legacy of service or a large catalog of history, you know, like a video we just did is a BAR. BAR is over 100 years old. That thing has some history on its butt. This bad boy, not as much. Finding a little bit more current times history makes it interesting. Now, I couldn't find any first-hand accounts of how the Tavor did or how they preferenced it in Ukraine. Funny enough, I did think it was referenced that potentially some Azov Battalion guys were using Tavor 21s. If you know anything about the Azov Battalion, you can kind of see the irony of those guys using a Israeli-made weapon. Connect the dots. Do some geopolitical math in your head. I mentioned Goodyear PD earlier, at least here being in Arizona. I thought that was interesting about the X-95, but there was some law enforcement agencies that actually adopted the Tavor SAR in particular. The Pennsylvania State Capitol Police, or I believe it's the Pennsylvania Capitol Police, adopted variants of the Tavor SAR. So I do like the fact that police adopted a bullpup, but I also don't like the fact that police adopted a bullpup. And of course, there's pros and cons to everything, but I'm going to try and stay on track. Now, if you're unfamiliar, of course, with a bullpup, essentially the entire mechanism is behind the uh, pistol grip. Essentially, you bring that fire control grip forward, and it makes the gun a more compact package with better ballistic advantages. Now, this barrel is going to be an 18-inch barrel as opposed to, say, my 10.5 package, right? So my 10.5 gun is about the same length as this entire gun with the stock collapsed and 10.5 ballistically with 5.56 is not going to be as advantageous as the ballistic advantage of an 18 inch barrel. 5.56 excels with longer barrels. It's kind of very common knowledge if you don't know this and then now you do. So that is the biggest perk of the bullpup. The biggest downside of the bullpup is typically the trigger. Now, Goranthem, of course, also covered his Geisley trigger in his Tavor X95. I believe they make Geisley triggers for the Tavor SAR, and this one is a Temney trigger, so it makes the gun that much better. The gun is unsafe, a quick ghosting of the trigger. You can see a little bit of mush, and then it has a really nice break. Do it again. So there's uh, there's the play 
then there's some mush, and then the brake. Okay. Nice short reset. So you can speed this gun up and run it pretty fast and you can enhance the bullpup. It really is crazy how advantageous bullpups are when it comes to having that compact firepower. My 10.5 here with the stock extended to where I usually rest it is longer than of course the 18 inch barreled Tavor. And I like showing you guys a direct example just so you have that monkey brain visual learning style if you're anything like me. Now a real quick thing about the Tavor is that when they designed it, they had the thought process and they they were even claiming that it is more reliable than the AR-15 platform. And I'm sure there's a variation of mud tests and torture tests on the internet you can go watch, which whether it disclaims or proves it, I don't feel like getting my gun dirty, so that's why no one will remember my name. But what I do will do real quick is pop this bad boy open. So you have this pin on the rear, and for cleaning purposes, we're gonna open her on up and show you the guts of the gun. Pull it out, boom, just like that, you can pop out the gun. And then you have your gas tube on top and your chamber right below it. Now the Tavorsar gas system, or I believe also the X25, is a long stroke gas piston system. You can see here the bolt and the extractor down here on the bottom. And essentially if you wanna clean it any further, you just take down this whole setup right here. But it is rather convenient and easy to get to. I will give them that. But also on the flip side, it's also a pain in the ass to kind of work on the gun, at least in my opinion. Because if you wanna break the gun down any further for even more cleaning purposes, you're gonna need a special wrench. And that's not to say that the AR-15 is crazy simple either, but essentially how you can keep going and disassembling it, it's not as easy in my head, at least in my American brain, as the AR-15. Because you essentially have to take this wrench, you turn the gun, you have to lift this tab back here, you start disassembling it, you have these screws up here for the hand guard, taking out the charging handle. I did have to take this gun down and mess with it to get the Mars Red Dot on, which the Mars Red Dot is a Picatinny type attachment directly to the gas block. Now, I'd feel bad because typically I'm a show, don't tell kind of guy if I can be, but in this case, I'm not gonna take the entire gun down to it being a massive pain in the ass. And also because there's also probably other YouTube videos on it. But like I said, two Picatinny mounts on the gas block and you can attach this Mars red dot directly to the gun. Now, is there gonna be a downside to having your red dot directly attached to a gas block, which is probably going to get very hot after a large amount of shooting? Yeah, probably, I don't know. Now, another thing you'll see a lot of Tavor owners talk about, whether it be Tavor SAR X95, I was watching Iraq Veteran 8888's video on his Tavor video, and he had a suppressor on his, and Garantham talked about how he had issues with the suppressing, and he didn't do it because it's so overgassed. Now, I don't know what Iraq Veteran 8888 did, but essentially, just to play it safe and keep a lot of gases out of my face because breathing in carbon gases like this isn't the best for you for longevity and I shoot a lot so just to play it safe I put some duct tape over the other side of the ejection port because this is an ambidextrous gun so you can switch sides with the ejection port so I figured uh, I'm gonna play it safe in that aspect that's why hence the duct tape and of course super simple to put back together and close her shut push pin and she's in and of course if you want to learn more about firearms and going in depth you can take your education next level with sdi one of the channel sponsors so big thank you to sdi go get accredited gunsmith training now the tavor being kind of that overhyped gun type of weapon it's even starting to be phased out by its inventors or at least by its host nation the idf i believe they're starting to take a lot of those guns and put them into the reserve units that they haven't already this also includes the x95 but again i'm not an idf military expert so i could be wrong but from all the stuff i personally see of their high speed guys and or at least Agilite's marketing too, is all running AR-15 platform styled weapons. So it kind of, the proof is in the pudding that yes, you can have a cool compact gun. You still may not be able to replace certain benefits of the AR-15. Now, this gun yet again, didn't catch on too hot on the American market, but it did catch on very well within pop culture. As I mentioned earlier, Modern Warfare 2, the Call of Duty franchise, the Battlefield franchise, made this gun with its unique look, its bullpup design, very sought after by video game manufacturers for another unique weapon to add to the arsenal. Of course, doing my homework, I was thinking, why do they stray away, these game developers stray away from calling the guns the names? Because I remember in Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, they called this bad boy the Tar-21, which is more accurate to its designating name, as opposed to now, it was like called like the Ram 7 or some dumb shit. 
like that. Also movies, this thing is loved to be featured in sci-fi movies. Usually a sci-fi director will see this gun and say, hey, this or the AUG can be like, paint it white, get it in the movie, it's my sci-fi gun. Now in our video with the Mark 18 versus Mike's SPR, essentially we saw that the 18 inch variation of that AR-15 was dominating out to longer distances. And while this gun necessarily isn't as known for its MOA accuracy, it has a decent standard for what it is, right? This isn't known as like a special purpose rifle, but the biggest advantage that it has is of course that 18 inch barrel and the compact package. I can't harp that enough because of how effective 5.56 is with the longer barrels and that kinetic dump of energy into your target that you are taking down, right? So I wanna actually demonstrate this to you guys. So we're gonna take the Blood Diamond 10.5 and we're gonna take the Devour 21 and we're gonna push them out to around, what, 300 to 400, maybe even 500 meters and see how these do. To keep it equal, these of course are gonna have red dots, but I will be preference to the Blood Diamond Carb 15 for its Aimpoint Pro, so whatever, let's do it. All right, so first off, we're gonna use the Devour 21 18 inch barrel, and we're using it in conjunction with the ammo sponsor, AAC, using some 77 grain, very good ammunition, and a little bit of a windy day out here, so we're gonna be trying it out, we're gonna be suffering through it. Savio will be spotting me, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Man, my eyes are not great. High right. High right, we will drop her down. No call. Hit. 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 Cool. Let's move to the reduced C zone steel to the left. Low. Impact. Low. Impact. 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 Not getting too shabby with this thing. Yeah, solid string. Try the C zone. Uh, I'm gonna go farther target. 300? Yeah. No call. Uh, two right. targets right. But how much targets? Two. Uh, just under. Target low. Impact. No. This will just use the irons, but it's on the red dot. Low. Half a target low. About a, just a smidge high, just barely over. Impact. Impact. <laughs> Car 15 is just my gun, baby. <laughs> All right, he's on steel. About two targets right. Just a smidge right. All right, I'm gonna cheat and use the irons. Way low, like two targets low. Same thing, and right. Got the wind too, pushing to your left. Impact. Impact. Ooh. Now, of course, this being the 18 inch barrel, you have the option of mounting a bayonet to her. Boop, just like that. Now, of course, bayonet on a, uh, on a bull pup, you're not getting the most reach. You know what I mean? It's not like a Civil War era rifle where you pretty much have a spear. But it's still a nice little option in case, of course, you go very black on ammo and it's always a popular thing with certain LARPers and or militaries. So that's a cool little option. Ideally, the a preferred barrel length I'd like to have on this is going to be probably like a 15 inch, I think it is, all the way chopped down with a muzzle device right there. Maybe pen and weld it. That would be my ideal for the classic, classic Tavor look. Now, of course, for performance, it's always nice with an extra three inches. That's what she said. For my personal, like, cloning brain when I think of this gun, which, of course, is not a perfect clone. It's trying 
be nice to it. So we did some shooting with my beloved Car 15, the 10.5, 77 grains. Also threw some 55 grain in there. And then we, of course, did the 18 inch Tavorsar. And well, these guns necessarily weren't designed for really pushing out to range. I mean, these that range we were shooting were well within the capability of these platforms. Um, of course, this thing is going to excel more if you had the monolithic upper, maybe throw the LPVO on in there, and then you have a really interesting little package in itself. This, of course, the Tavor Sar was designed with the thought process of CQB, mechanized infantry, in mind. If you were working in the CQB environment, you still have to take long shots, if you're in an urban environment, I should say. So, the thing about like an urban environment is you have to take both long shots, you also have to take you know very close shots. If you're entering into buildings, you're room clearing, then all of a sudden you may have a threat that may be you know hundreds of yards down the road. So it's all very fast changing of pace. Out in the wilderness, like say Arizona where we're shooting, statistically speaking, a threat's not like gonna sneak up on you too bad. It's still a probability, but it's very open, and unless you're moving at night, unless you get the drop on someone, uh, you can see a lot of threats coming, if that makes sense. So that is just the reality of the world we live in. But I, of course, this gun was taking up a lot of free real estate in my head. I was looking at it, and I was like, man, you know what? I want to break this gun out again. I want to show it off to you guys. I want to dive a little bit more in depth, and I want to stretch out its legs. And boys, I think we accomplished all of that in this video. So thanks for watching, gentlemen. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section, turn on the notification bells, all that YouTube jargon that is both cheesy and very much white noise. As always, stay easy, stay breezy, catch you boys on the flip. Do I sound like I'm really out of breath for no reason? Yeah. <laughs> do it, do it.